Hi, this is Melanie from Hook to the Left, and this is our next episode in our Stitch Study series. In this episode, we will be learning the double crochet back loop. I'm also going to show you the front loop as well because I'm not going to dedicate another video to the front loop, but we'll be pulling that out once we do it and then doing just the back loop only. So let's get started. again in this next stitch study and today uh, we will be going over the double back loop crochet um, stitch and this is this is what it looks like you can see uh, here if there's a it's got a little bit of texture to it and and a lot of the next few stitches I'm gonna do will be very textured so it's got a little bit of texture to it and um, it's a very easy stitch to learn. If you've got the double crochet, you're gonna get this, no problem. Um, so my favorite thing to use this for is hats. Yes, little beanies, love it. I'm gonna insert a picture up here of one that I made for my daughter. It's not on her head, it's on a mummy's head, or not a mummy. <laughs> I don't have mummies in my house, I promise. No vampires either, um, but it's on like a, a, a little um, uh, a fake head. Anyway, and so you'll see that picture up here. And then um, over here somewhere, I'm gonna put a picture of me with the one that I made for my head. And um, it it's really is my go-to stitch for making hats for the winter. I put, I, I just make the hat, I put a big old pom-pom on the top and um, call it a day and I love it. And use this with a super soft chunky yarn. It works up so quick, it's amazing. And I learned that um, pattern from, a, I say probably about two or three years ago from, I found it from Making Do Crew. And um, if I can, I'm gonna try and link them up here somewhere. Um, if I can't get the link up here, um, I'm kind of limited because I, I, I don't have a, a monetized channel uh, as to what I can link. So, but if I can't, I'm gonna link them up here. Regardless, I'm gonna send a link down below to their video tutorial to this hat. It's called the One and a Half Hour Beanie. You can find it on Pinterest. It is a great pattern. It is super duper easy. And, um, and really easy to scale up, scale down, whatever you need to do to make that hat for you um, or whomever you're making it for. Anyway, let's get back to this tutorial. So you wanna continue with the same yarn weight um, that you have been using. I'm using worsted weight. Um, my yarn of choice is the Mainstays yarn from Walmart. Um, it's, it's really, it's basically like a, your Red Heart um, Super Saver. I think it's a little bit softer than Super Saver, to be honest with you, but that's what you're gonna use. You also need some darning needles. These will help you thread in your ends once you snip them off. Then you will also need a pair of scissors and a measuring tape. Now this measuring tape, what, we're gonna, what you would wanna use it for is to measure and make sure that you make a square. Okay, so you wanna measure this way and this way just to make sure that you um, make a square because eventually I'd like to take some of these squares and put them all together into a blanket. Some of them won't make the blanket, some of them will. Um, as I'm going through this and, and doing this with you, I'm finding that some of my some of my squares end up a little bit bigger, some of them end up a little bit smaller. Uh, I will probably have a blocking lesson when I do decide to go ahead and um, get this down and put it in a blanket. But for now, I don't have enough squares for that. Um, but we will get there eventually and I will show you how to put them all together. That'll be part of this uh, stitch study series. So let's, oh, you know what? The most important thing that I did not even put in here that we need, your hook. So you want a five and a half millimeter hook. This is a Clover Armor hook. It is my favorite hook. So it's an ergonomic hook. And I have that link down below if you would like to find out more about it and get one of your own. Again, this is my favorite hook. And these are my favorite needles. Those are also linked down below if you would like to get some of your own. So let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna assume in this tutorial that you do know how to do a slip knot and a chain stitch. If you need slower, um, slower teaching for that because you haven't done it yet, then go back to my very first video in this series. It's with for the single crochet. I'll have it linked up here above. 
but um, go back to that and it'll it'll show you uh, the slip stitch or I call it slip stitch it's actually a slip knot the slip stitch is something different but the slip knot and the chain stitch so let's go ahead and what I'm going to do I'm doing all of my squares 25 stitches across um, since I'm going to be doing double crochet I'm going to do uh, 25 plus 2 Okay, so let's go ahead and chain one, two, three, four, five, two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and one, two. Okay, so now we're finished with our chain stitch and we're going to start on our first row. Um, this this first row is going to look very familiar if you've been following along with my stitch study series. Uh, you're going to do double crochet. So go ahead and yarn over, and then I go back to the third chain, the third chain from the hook. Yarn over, pull through. So you've got three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over pull through two and that's where the double comes from so it's a double crochet stitch you've got your chain and your double crochet crochet stitch let's do it again yarn over put your hook through the chain loop yarn over pull through and pull up a loop so now you've got three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over then pull through two let's do that two more times and then I'm going to leave you to finish out the chain uh, or not the chain but the the first row so you yarn over put your hook through the loop yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two one more time yarn over go through the chain yarn over pull up a loop so you've got three on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two okay so let's go ahead and you want to put a double crochet in each of the chains okay and i will meet you at the end okay we're back and i'm almost at the end of my first row of double crochet stitches so let's go ahead and finish off this row before we turn so yarn over go through the chain yarn over pull up a loop You've got, now got three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. I know I'm going through this fast. If you need me to do double crochets slower for you, then please don't hesitate to visit my double crochet stitch to, to stitch study, and I'll link that somewhere around up here, and uh, and then you, you'll get a much slower version of that. I also think I've had three cups of coffee, so I'm talking a little fast, so just bear with me. All right, let's go ahead and do that last stitch before we turn. All right, yarn over, put your yarn through that last chain link, yarn or pull through it, pull up a loop. So you've got three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so now we're done. And I know I say this in every video, but I do want to make sure that if somebody's watching me for the first time, they understand this. This is so important and can be frustrating for new crocheters. See how my, my, um, my line is kind of bowing a little bit. That's because anytime that I stitch a chain stitch, I, um, I tend to, to do it a little bit tighter than I would the stitches here. That's not uncommon. It is very, very common. Um, since this is just a slight bow, it's going to work itself out like it did in these other squares that I created. Um, you don't see where it bows. So, um, it will work itself out. If you find that it's also practice makes perfect. So the more that you do this chain, the more likely that you're going to start evening out your tension. So if you find that, um, if you do find that it's just curling up too much and um, you don't think it's going to work itself out in the square, then please go ahead and move up this hook by 0.5 millimeters just for the chain. So for example, this is a 5.5 millimeter hook. You want to switch it to a six millimeter hook, do just the chain, and then move back to your 5.5 millimeter hook for the rest of your stitch work. And that will help even out, even that out. Now don't forget, practice makes 
perfect. So the more often you do that chain, the more likely you're gonna start evening out your tension. Okay, so that just comes from, uh, there's people with many years, many more years of experience than me and they, they do a perfect chain and it's the same tension as the rest of it. There are other things that you can do um, that I will teach you later on in the series, but, uh, or later on down the road, um, things like the foundation chain stitch, um, which makes this very stretchy and you have less likely of this bowing. But we'll get to that in a different video, not yet. For now, let's go ahead and learn the front and back loop stitching. Now I'm gonna do a few of the front loop first and then we're gonna take that out and then we're gonna focus on back loop. But I wanna show you how to do both in this video because I probably won't do a video dedicated to front loop only since they're so similar. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and chain two and turn my work. All right, so if you take a look at the anatomy of a stitch, Here's your stitch, and, and remember, the chain two counts as a stitch, so we never do anything in this first stitch, at least not for our purposes. Um, so this is your post, that's your post of a stitch, and this is the top of a stitch. Okay, when you're looking at a stitch, this is your front loop that's facing towards you, that's closest to you, and this is your back loop. That's the one furthest away from you. Okay, so what does that mean? Now, I don't know if you've been with me for my other tutorials, but every time I talk about going into a stitch to start your sti stitch work on your second row, I always say go through both loops on the stitch. So you go under both. But when you're dealing with front or back loop work, instead, you're gonna go just under one. So here's a front loop. So you see you've got you're here, you've got your loop that, that was already on as you carry along your stitches. This is the loop you just went under. And then over here is the back loop, okay? So we're gonna just show you real quick how to do a single crochet like that. So you do a single crochet, you yarn over, pull up one, yarn over, and pull through both. All right, so let's show, and then you'll see here where it kind of pulls up that loop a little bit easier than it would if you were going through both loops. This is gonna work itself out, and you'll see that as the work goes along, okay? So let's do one more back, front loop, okay? I'm gonna go through just the front loop of the hook, like that, or the, the stitch, not the hook. Um, my hook went through the front loop of the stitch. All right, then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through both, okay? So I'm gonna do that one more time because I got my terminology a little mixed up. So you wanna send your hook through that front loop right there. You see there's the back loop. You see how it's splitting that V. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Oh, I don't know if you can start to see this, but it starts to give some texture on the back where you're not going through that loop, okay? You start to see it a little bit more as you're going through. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these out and we're gonna focus on the back loop only, okay? All right, let me take those out. And we are gonna be doing a double crochet. So forget everything, those three stitches that I just did. <laughs> and we're gonna start doing back loop only. All right, so let's go ahead and yarn over for that double crochet stitch. Remember, we're skipping this first one and we want to go into the back loop. So we need to put our hook through the middle of the V, then go under that back loop, okay? Yarn over and pull up a loop. That gives you three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over since we're doing a double crochet. Then you wanna go into the back loop of the V so put your hook into the middle of that V and go under that back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that a couple more times. Yarn over for the double crochet and then put your hook in the middle of the V and go under the back loop. Yarn over, pull, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, 
pull through too. And here's where you can see where this settles down. It's pulling up that loop a little much there. Like I said, that settles out just like it did for these first two that you did. So let's do one more and then I'm gonna leave you to do the row on your own. So yarn over and then put your hook through the back loop down in the middle of the V and put it under the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and finish that out. Do the exact same thing all the way, almost to the end. I will be back with you at the end uh, whenever we get to the chain stitch. Uh, I'll start, I'll probably do a couple more stitches with you and then do the chain stitch. Okay, so I will meet, meet up with you then. Okay, welcome back and we are almost done with this row. I have three more stitches to put in this row. So let's go ahead and get that done. Yarn over, go into the middle of your V and go under the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. It leaves you with three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So again, yarn over, go into the middle of your V and under that back loop. And then my yarn's already kind of over with the way I hold the yarn. But so pull up a loop and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now the only thing left in it, it's very easy to miss this stitch, but you want to go into this chain. Now we don't do front or back loops in the chain. So, and you'll find whenever you're doing front, front loop or back loop work, the first, um, the ends are always going to be because it's chain work. Uh, you're not going to worry about the front and back loop. It's always going to be the first or the second stitch. You, once you chain up, it's going to be the second stitch. And then on the last stitch, you go through the top of your chain. Okay, so let's just yarn over and do a double crochet through the top of our chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And there we are. We're finished with our second row and you can start to see the texturing there okay so now we're going to chain two and flip our work and we're going to i'm going to do a few more stitches with you so yarn over so it's chain one chain two flip my work and now we're going to go back to working in the back loops yarn over go into the middle of the v and under the back loop pull through pull through some yarn and pull through two pull through two yarn over into the middle of the V and under that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the middle of the V and under that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So let's do that two more times. Yarn over, go into the middle of that V and under your back loop, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so yarn over, go into the middle of the V and under the back loop, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And one more time before I leave you to go to the end of the row. Yarn over, go into the middle of your V and under that back loop, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And one last time before I leave you to your own devices. Yarn over, go into the middle of your V and under your back loop. Yarn, or pull through some yarn. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And there you go. Let's go ahead and finish out that row. I'll meet you up at the end. Okay, we're back and we're at the end of this row. I just have a couple more stitches to put in and then we will turn our work and get started. So let's go ahead, I mean, get started on the next row. Let's go ahead and yarn over, put your your hook through the middle of that V and under that, la that back loop, pull through some yarn. So pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, Okay, again, yarn over. We're gonna, this time we're gonna go into the chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that's it for the third row. You can start to see the texture on that side. Okay, as we get going, you'll see the texture more and more. It's really neat how it works. All right, so let's go ahead and chain two. One, 
to and turn our work. So let's do a few, just a few on this row, and then I'm going to leave you to go ahead and finish up your square on your own. For me, I need to do 14 rows. It all depends on how many you need to do, depending on how, how far it is across and depending on your gauge and everything, but that's what you have your tape measure for. So for me, with the 25 chain, I want to, with the 25 stitches across, I need to do 14 rows. So let's go ahead and start into our stitch work again. Yarn over, go into the middle of that V and under that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. So yarn over, go into the middle of your V and under that back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. So yarn over again for the next stitch, go into the middle of that V and under that back loop, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And this will be the last stitch that I go through with you. And then um, and then I'll meet up with you at the end. So yarn over, go into the middle of that V and under the back loop, yarn over, pull through and up a, up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to your own devices. Go ahead and finish out your square, and I will meet up with you at the end. Welcome back, and I am at the end of my cloth, as you should be too. And I just have a couple more stitches to do, and then we're going to fasten off. So yarn over, and go into the middle of your V, under the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the top of the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so that is the, the last of my cloth, and let me go ahead and fasten this off. And weave in my ends. So uh, in this case, whenever you weave in your ends, so on, on, whenever I weave in my ends on a double crochet, I always bring bring the end down the chain a little bit. But since um, it's a, it's the back loop only, you want to flip over and run your needle through the back here, which is what I will be doing. And the same goes down here. Well, not so much down here because you're doing the um, the bottom of the chain, so you can run it through this part right here. So let's go ahead and start threading in our ends. And while I do that, um, I just wanted to remind you again, one of my favorite uses for this particular stitch is for hats or beanies with a big old pom-pom on the top. You don't have to put the pom-pom on the top. I just personally like it with the pom-pom. Okay, so I've got my needle through the last bit of this. And I mean, under the loops um, from the, you know, the top row to the, the next row below it. Have it through the loops and I'm gonna thread my yarn through. So as I was saying uh, before, um, one of my favorite uses for this yarn is to make hats. You don't have to put the pom-poms on it. You can make it without the pom-poms. I just like a big old pom-pom on the top of my hat. Um, and if you're gonna, okay, you might start hearing my cat cry because we just let him outside and he wants to go back outside again, but uh, we don't let him go outside alone. So anyway, if you hear that, we're not torturing kitties. That's not what's happening. <laughs> um, but I'm going to link up here somewhere uh, or definitely down below. But I'm going to link to the Make and, Drew, Make and Do Crew tutorial on the one and a half hour beanie um, that uses this stitch. And um, it's, just, it's just super easy hat to make. I, and I love the look of it. And um, it's something that you can make for you know, your friends and family um, for Christmas, you know. Um, so we'll go ahead and snip that off. And if you find that these stitch, uh, these stitch study videos are value added, then do me a favor and uh, like this video and subscribe down below. That will let you know every time that I post a new video um, also, at the end of this video, you'll see a link to the, uh, I have a list made of all the stitch study uh, videos, so you can go through them 
um, and, and see all of them that are available to you at this time. Uh, go ahead and save that to your list if you like. Um, if there is a particular stitch that you would like to be seen done in this stitch studies and these stitch studies let me know down below and I will be happy to see what I can do about getting that added to my list of stitches that I plan on doing. Um, also keep in mind uh, I do have coming out here in the next few weeks a few reviews as well as um, af next week after um, this video is posted there will be next week the next stitch study is going to be front and back post stitches. Now um, you're actually going to be doing that for the next two weeks but it's in, in different ways so um, be prepared for that and uh, it's just going to be a couple of very nicely textured squares are going to be coming up so th that'll be a lot of fun I can't wait so the next one's going to be front and back post st stitching the way I'm going to do it is um, how uh, we do it for cuffs on hats or wrist cuffs um, and then after that we're going to do the waffle stitch so that's what you can expect here in the next few weeks along with some reviews on Wednesdays and here you go that's it that's your your square and you can see that neat texture it's hard to to really show it on camera but it's a, it's a nice um let's see maybe if we go down that way see in that neat I love that texture and follow me on Instagram and you, you can see where I post pictures of stuff like this or even you know the picture I showed earlier of me wearing my hat or the hat that I made for my daughter. Those are the kinds of things that I post on Instagram and uh, feel free to follow me there and um, hit me up in the DMs if you have any questions. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys have a wonderful day and I will chat with you soon. Bye bye.